a uh, welcome all student friends so uh, in this chapter one gear and is written currently from department of mechanical engineering Shilangi institute Pandarbur. so already we are familiar with two chapters per gear helical gear as well as bevel gear so in previous chapters we have studied the basics of different gears in this per gear we have studied the basics of uh, spur gear, then uh, reduction ratio of this spur gear, various applications of this spur gear, etc. The counterpart of this spur gear, we are considering the helical gear. For high speed applications, we are giving the preference to the helical gear. And in case of bevel gear, we have seen that whenever the two shafts are intersecting, and in most of the cases, when the intersecting angle is 90 degree, then we are giving the preference to the bevel gear. So this worm gear is having its own application area, application domain and this particular worm gears are used for specific applications. In case of worm gear, if we see the basic construction of the worm gear is shown here. So this particular shaft like portion on which this helical helix portion is present, this uh, is considered to be worm and this gear like portion which is shown here, this is considered to be worm wheel. So this particular worm and this is particular worm wheel. Is it okay? So, in case of this gear box, if we observe, then this worm is fitted like this and this is uh, worm wheel. Is it okay? And uh, with reference to that, if this is the axis, we consider this particular axis of the worm wheel and this particular axis as a axis of worm. Then, uh, if we define the axis, then axis of worm and axis of worm wheel both are non-intersecting to each other. So, this is like skew line. In engineering graphics, we have studied the skew line. So, this particular axis is the axis of worm and this particular axis is the axis of worm wheel. And both the axes are uh, not intersecting to each other. Is it okay? If I try to identify the angle between them, that angle may be 90 degree, but these are non-intersecting to each other. Is it okay? So, likewise, here we can see, observe there, this particular portion is considered to be worm and this is worm wheel. So, this is assembled here and uh, this is side view of this worm and worm wheel. Is okay. Then by part of the introduction here, worm gear are used to transmit power between two non-intersecting shafts which are in general at right angle to each other. Already we have seen here now. As a part of advantage or uh, the thing which is different inside the worm gear, inside that, we may consider that this particular type of worm and worm wheel, this assembly, is used for high speed reduction application. A high speed reduction application means this is 100 as to 1. In case of spur as well as bevel gear, we have seen that in case of spur and helical gear, this is near about 6 as to 1. In most of the cases, this is used, but some cases 10 as to 1. In case of uh, bevel gear, that is 3 as to 1, or in some cases, we may consider it as 1 as to 1. But in case of worm and worm wheel, that particular reduction ratio as given here, it is 100 as to 1. That means we can imagine that uh, when one wheel is, when, when, when the shaft is rotating at 100 rpm, then another shaft will rotate at 1 rpm. That much amount of reduction is possible with the help of worm and worm wheel. Okay. Normally, it may be used as 70 as to 1. In certain cases, as high as 100 as to 1, it can be used. Now, Worm gear drives are compact, means in order to reduce that much amount of speed for spur gear or some another kind of gears, whatever the space required, that space will be very, very large. So, for worm and worm gear, this is very compact and uh, with small overall dimensions, we can reduce that much amount of speed. So, uh, it is considered the worm wheel drives are compact with small overall dimensions compared with equivalent spur or helical gear drive as having same speed reduction. Is it okay? Now, the third advantage in case of worm and worm wheel is the operation is smooth and silent. Is it okay? Whenever the worm and worm wheels are uh, rotating, then for reduction of 100 as to 1 or up to 70 as to 1, the operations are smooth as well as silent. The fourth advantage in case of worm and worm wheel that we can say that provision can be made for self-locking operation. Now, what is mean by this self-locking operation? Means, if we transfer the motion and power from worm to worm wheel, then it is possible. But opposite, from worm wheel to worm, if anybody starts to um, 
but transfer the motion as power then it is not possible this is called as self locking operation means worm and worm wheel can be made so here the word is used can be made that means in some cases if the efficiency is lesser in that case self locking operations are observed if efficiencies are larger then self locking operations are not there so is it given that this particular worm and worm wheel is used in both way that is in case of whenever we required self locking type of operation then this particular provision can be made with the help of worm and worm wheel so where motion is transmitted from worm only from worm to worm wheel this is advantage in application like cranes and lifting devices means in case of cranes or lifting devices if suppose any big uh, object is there and that bit of big object is lifted and in case if uh, motion gets transferred from worm wheel to worm then this particular object may come down due to gravity and in order to lock that particular its motion and uh, its uh, uh, um, accidents or some another kind of um, uh, things which may happen or uh, accidental cases in order to avoid this this self locking operations are essential so this provision can be made with the help of worm and worm here again now coming to the drawbacks the efficiency in is low compared to other type of gear drives means in spur helical bivel efficiencies are larger but in case of worm and worm wheel efficiency is less the worm wheel is gen in general is made of phosphorus bronze means as we have seen that uh, reduction is say 1 test 1 or 100 as to 1 large amount of friction is possible there surface to surface contact happens in case of worm and worm wheel in other cases it may be line contact but here as surface contact side happens there is large friction and this phosphorus bronze is the material which is having advantage that this particular material is having anti frictional properties means no surface to surface contact happens coefficient of friction of the phosphorus bronze is very low and that's why worm wheel in general is made of phosphorus bronze and which increases the cost though this particular material having properties of anti frictional properties uh, this is high cost so that's why it increases the cost of the worm and worm so this becomes one kind of drawback in case of worm and worm drive secondly as there is uh, friction la large friction and surface contact is there so that's why heat generated in worm gear drive so large amount of heat gets generated and this particular heat when it is dissipated to the uh, so for that purpose uh, for surrounding or for another case if lubricating oil is required to use so uh, another provisions are required to make in case of uh, this particular worm and worm wheel assembly uh, in which this particular dissipating of lubricating oil to the housing walls and finally to the surrounding this heat is required to transfer and uh, that's why this becomes one kind of drawback in case of worm and worm wheel similarly the power transmitting capacity is low in case of worm and uh, worm gear drive so it can be used up to 100 kW power transmitting capacity so worm and worm gear drive is used for up to 100 kW power transmitting capacity and this is one kind of drawback in case of worm and worm wheel now going off ahead for the one more important point is the relationship between number of stars on worm and worm efficiency so in case of um, previous diagram we have seen uh, this is the worm and this particular portion is called as start if this is single start then like this this start is used if there are more than one helix suppose this particular start starts here and it forms such a helix and this helix is ended here likewise if some another parallel start is started here same like this one is it okay another start is started here then this will be considered as two start similarly if one more start is made here available then it will be considered as three starts means one helix is present in single start likewise two helix are present in case of two start and likewise multiple helix are present is it okay so initially we will consider what is meant by single threaded worm wheel with large uh, speed reduction means uh, single start two start three start likewise single threaded worm single start we are considering as single threaded and more than one more than two more than three like this this is considered to be multi threaded so two and it's onwards we are considering as multi threaded worm and in one that is for one single uh, start we are considering as single threaded worm so single threaded worm gives large speed reduction however 
the efficiency is low so we can understand the relationship between number of stars on worm and its efficiency if single thread worm then large speed reduction however efficiency is low the large velocity ratio is obtained at the cost of efficiency means efficiency is less in case of single thread worm but in case of multi thread worm it gives high efficiency however the speed reduction is low means here speed reduction may be decreased efficiency can be increased by adding number of threads for single thread for two thread for three thread likewise as number of thread starts to increases then efficiency also increases however the uh, large velocity ratio is obtained at the cost of efficiency okay so we should understand these two concepts single threaded worm gives large speed, speed reduction multi threaded worm gives high efficiency so that is the difference between these two is it okay as number of threads increases efficiency increases and for single thread we are getting large speed reduction speed reduction so that is the uh, different thing which is in case of uh, single threaded and multi threaded is it okay now this particular concept we should uh, understand properly so this is the terminology and geometric relations or this is the way of representation of worm and worm wheel so always worm and worm wheel are designated with the help of this particular uh, terms so these particular terms are z1 or z2 q and m what is mean by z1 z1 are number of stars on the worm z2 are number of teeth on worm wheel so for single threaded or single uh, star particular worm we may consider z1 is equal to 1 you know yeah so single star or single threaded worm we are considering z1 is equal to 1 you know z2 is number of teeth on worm wheel you know so number of teeth on worm wheel this is the common terminology as used in spur gear helical gear or bevel gear uh, one more thing which is different here it is q which is considered to be diametrical diametral quotient you know okay so diametral quotient is q which is new terminology which is present in worm and worm wheel in previous other kind of gear this particular terminology was not present and use as usual em is module is it okay so we can understand what is mean by z1 z1 are number of stars on the worm already we have seen now that is what is mean by star z2 number of teeth on worm wheel so that can also we can understand module we know so module is ratio of diameter to the number of teeth so diameter of the wheel and number of teeth on wheel so that particular ratio is module so that term is also not new for us z1 z2 we can understand now let us consider this particular q so q is considered to be diametrical diameter quotient is it okay so diameter quotient so this particular value diameter quotient we can consider as q if we consider then that particular q we may have this uh, particular ratio means a uh, number of uh, diameter of the worm to the module so this particular q is given as d1 upon m so d1 is considered as diameter of worm you know okay so understand the diameter equation concept q is d1 upon m q is equal to d1 upon m so d1 is diameter of worm and m is module you know okay so diameter equation is nothing but uh, ratio of diameter of the worm to the module is it okay so this particular things z1 z2 q and m that should we understand here because the designation of worm and worm wheel is always given with the help of this z1 z2 q and m if in any example is given and in that example if z1 in in that way if the values are provided then first value increase uh, first value uh, this particular value indicates number of stars so this is number of teeth on the worm wheel so diametrical quotient and module this is okay so we should understand this particular way of designation of worm and worm wheel because this particular way is used in the numericals also so this values will be used accordingly this is okay so thank you for this previous or introductory part of the worm and worm wheel